Hello friends, uh, I am Professor Vagmadi Biyar, working as Assistant Professor in Agronomy Department. Today we will discuss the topic on crop production technology of jute. This is an important fiber crop uh, next to the cotton. You can see the details first, uh, that is first point, botanical name. Uh, the botanical name of jute that is cultural species. Uh, because uh, they are having the two, uh, there are two types of the jute species that is first one the white jute and the second one the tosa jute. In terms of the white jute, the botanical name that is Corturus capsularis and the, in case of the tosa jute, the botanical name that is Corturus ulitoris. Then family belongs to, uh, in case of the jute, that is Tilesi and the origin of uh, jute that is African Indo-Burma, especially the White jute is originated from, that is Corturus capsularis, originated from Indo-Burma and the Tosa jute, that is Corturus ulitoris, is originated from the Africa. Next point, that is geographical distribution. The major jute uh, growing countries are China, India, Thailand, then Brazil, then Peru, Burma and the Nepal. In India, the major jute growing states are West Bengal, Assam, Bihar, Orissa and the Uttar Pradesh and the West Bengal is the highest uh, area under the jute cultivation in uh, India among the all states. Next point that is classification. There are, in case of jute, there are two types of uh, species. That is first one, Quarturus capsularis, that is called as the white jute. The fibers in this uh, white jute, their fibers are whitish in color. Hence, it is called as white jute and the taste, especially in the leaves, the bitter in taste of leaves due to presence of the Quarturin. Uh, the bitter substance known as theta fat and this species uh, that is white jute can uh, withstand or grow under the waterlogging condition. And the second one that is Quarturus oleotoris that is tosa jute. The fibers are yellow to grey or even uh, reddish in color and is known as the tosa jute. And the leaves of, uh, of the tosa jute are tasteless known as metha fat and the, the, this, tosa, this species especially that is tosa jute can or cannot grow under the water logging condition. The, uh, uh, this uh, species can cultivate under the upland condition. This is a classification of jute. Uh, next one, the ecologic conditions, especially in the case of the soil uh, required for white jute. The white jute can grow under the, uh, go in the lateritic to, uh, lateritic to the red soils. Then water logging soils are ideal for white jute cultivation. The sandy loam to clay loam soils are unsuitable for white jute and the soils should be rich in organic matter. Then pH range should be six, uh, 4.5 to 6.5. That is, it can tolerate under the acidic soil condition. Then tosa jute, it can grow in uh, sandy to clay loam soils. The soil should be well drained and fertile one. And should, soil should have the high water holding capacity. Then alkaline soils are well suited uh, for the tosa jute cultivation. And the pH range required for the tosa jute, that is 6.5 to 7.5. Next point, that is climate. In terms of climate, uh, both that is tosa and the white jute, requires the similar climatic condition that is it is a tropical crop uh, it requires the warm weather then uh, jute thrives best well under the hot and humid climate and the optimum temperature ranging from 10 degrees 27 to 40, uh, 34 degrees celsius and the bright sunshine at the visibility stage helps to increase the yield of the fiber and the low temperature and cloudy weather harms or affect the quality of fiber and the final yield of the fiber Next one, the varieties, uh, especially Jute Agriculture Research Institute located at the Barakpur uh, in West Bengal has developed the different varieties of white jute and tosa jute. Uh, you can see here the, in case of Corturus capsularis, that is white jute, the, the varieties that is Bal Devi, Padma, then Joy Dev, then Rajendra Sadapad Dash One, then Sonali, then Samli. In case of Corturus olitoris, that is tosa jute, the varieties are Baisaki Tosa, Chaitali Tosa, then Basudev, then Naveen, then Mahadev, then JRO double six. That is a, this is a golden jubilee Tosa variety of uh, <coughs> jute, a special that is Tosa jute. Next one, the <coughs> field preparation. Uh, in case of field preparation, the white jute requires the puddling operation. That is it because it can withstand under the water logging condition. Hence, it requires the puddling operation. Then uh, uh, the three to four cross plowing operations. <coughs> are required to make the ideal soil condition, that is puddle. This conditions is helpful for the transplanting operation. In Tosa jute requires clean, clod free, uh, uh, filled with the fine tilth uh, for the successful establishment of seedlings. And then uh, it requires uh, one deep plowing, that is special Tosa jute requires one deep plowing and the 
5 to 6 harrowing operations are required to make the ideal seed bed that is fine seed bed. Next one seed sensing. Uh, in case of seed rate, white jute requires 6 to 8 kg per hectare and the tosa jute that requires 4 to 5 kg per hectare and the spacing then white, uh, white jute requires three, uh, 30 by 5, uh, 5 centimeter and the tosa jute requires 20 by 7 centimeter. And the sowing time in case of white jute uh, should be uh, uh, sown in the month of April to May and the so tosa jute in the month of middle or 15th uh, June or uh, in the month of June to uh, first fortnight of June to last week of June. And the sowing depth uh, especially for the jute that is 2 to 3 centimeter because seeds are very small in size. Then sowing methods especially for white jute uh, this the popular method of sowing that is transplanting only and the tosa jute uh, that is broadcasting drilling dribbling are the um, important methods uh, to be followed for the uh, sowing of the tosa jute. Then in case of seed treatment the jute uh, the seeds are treated with thyrum or captain at the rate of 3 gram per kg of seeds uh, against the attack of seed borne diseases and the seeds are also treated with the bio fertilizer like azotobacter or azospirillum at the rate of 25 gram per kg of seeds. Next one the miners and fertilizers especially for the jute uh, both that is uh, white and uh, tosa jute requires 5 to 8 tons of FOM or the compost should be applied at the time of final land preparation and the recommended dose of fertilizer for required for the jute that is 60, 40, 60 kg NPK per hectare that is half dose of nitrogen and the full dose of PNK should be applied at the time of sowing and the remaining half dose of nitrogen should be applied at uh, early vegetative or flowering stage. Uh, the additional application of the potassium at the rate of 60 kg uh, per hectare helps to improve in the color of fiber, uh, especially the quality of fiber like the texture, color or this uh, length and uh, especially staple length and then uh, uh, market price of the product which will be improved with the help of the potassium that is potassium is an important element or plays an important uh, role to improve the quality of the fiber especially in the fiber crops. Next one the intercultural operations especially in the jute uh, the thinning is an important intercultural operation that is thinning means removal of the extra plants or excessive plants or the weak plants or disease affected plants or ir irregular height plants instead of the healthy one the, that is called as thilling, uh, thinning. The main objective of thinning operation are, is to maintain the desired or optimum plant population then to reduce the competition between or uh, among the plants and to increase the crop yield. The thinning operation should be followed or should be done in 3 to 4 weeks after the sowing uh, operation. Next one the water management. The jute is generally grown under rainfed conditions. Uh, if it is uh, grown in Kharif season the, uh, with the excessive or optimum rains are issued then there is no need of irrigation. If it is grown in summer condition or the rains are not issued timely or late under the Kharif then uh, irrigation should be applied at the critical growth stages that is early vegetative growth stage then flowering stage then pod filling stage and the seed formation stage as a grown as a uh, fiber purpose the jute uh, uh, that is most sensitive growth critical uh, growth stage of the jute uh, that is uh, a flowering stage there is need to be apply irrigation at the flowering stage and then weed management the weed infestation in jute is maximum uh, up to 6 weeks uh, crop age then first weeding should be done at 3 to 4 weeks after sowing and uh, one hoeing and 3 to 4 weeding operations are required to make ideal crop environment. If the weeding operation is not possible then should apply herbicide like flow chlorine at the rate of 1 kg active ingredient per hectare in 1000 liter of water as a pre-plant incorporation spray. Uh, next one pest and diseases. The, there are number of pests that is jute semi looper, then jute uh, stem evil, then BR eric caterpillar then tobacco caterpillar, yellow mite, then jute girdle beetle, then red mite. Uh, this pest can be controlled by the spraying of the carboferon or the uh, spraying of the carboferin or the dust app, uh, uh, application of the malathion or the spraying of malathion at the rate of 1 liter and 1000 liter of water. Then uh, spray the crop with uh, quinalphos uh, at the rate of 1 liter and 1000 liter of water. Then also installing the uh, yellow stick traps then ferroman traps are to be integrated that is integrated pest management practices are to be followed for the control of the pest. Then diseases in case of the diseases the seedling blights then root rot, stem rot, color rot, then anthracnose 
uh, the disease is subdued can be controlled with the help of the seed treatment with the pyroma or captain at the rate of 3 gram per kg of seeds helps to prevent the seed borne diseases as well as spray the uh, crop with the zainab or mancozeb or the uh, agromycin at the, uh, at the rate of 1 liter in 800 liter of water this is the pest and disease with their management then harvesting rating extraction and yield in case of the jute the harvesting uh, should be start or should be done for as a fiber purpose at any time before flowering early harvesting gives the finer uh, uh, fiber of good quality whereas late harvesting gives a larger yield but uh, coarser fiber but in terms of the market the finer fiber have the good market than the coarser fiber hence the jute crop grown as a fiber purpose it should be harvested uh, that is ideal stage of the harvest is when the uh, plant are in uh, small pot stage the harvesting is done by cutting the plants close to the ground level with the help of the sharp sickle or the sharp knife the harvested plants are tied into the separate bundles of 18 to 20 cm and left standing in the field for 2 to 3 days for shedding of the leaves the apical portion of the plant may be also removed or so left in the field because to be avoid the uh, decomposition of the fibers or to uh production of the weak fiber next uh, point that is rating rating is the process by the fibers uh, in the bark get loosened and the separated from the wood stock this is a important process uh, to be done in the uh, jute for the removal of the uh, for the extraction of the fiber because the uh, fibers are tightly held on the uh, wood stock or this stock portion in it should be uh, removed or extract uh, easily with the help of this rating operation uh, the rating is the microbial process affected by various aerobic and anaerobic microflora the rating is done in the shallow water channel with the slow running clear water this is important criteria required for the rating operation that is should be select the shallow canal with slow running clear water then harvested jute bundles should be kept standing in 30 to 60 cm uh, deep water for 3 to 4 days before the entire bundle strip the later on the bundles of the jute should be placed side by side usually in the th- two to three layers and tied together then they are covered with the aquatic beads by, because to avoid the floating of the bundles and then float is as uh, so they weighing down the, the season logs or the uh, raw woods with the uh, or the uh, with concrete blocks are kept on the submerged uh, at the th- least uh, at least the 10 cm below this uh, surface of water and the rating is done at uh, 34 degrees celsius this is the best uh, or ideal temperature required for rating operation that is 34 degrees celsius at the end of the 8 days onwards the same stems are to be examined and if the fibers slip out or removed or are extracted easily from the stem on the pressure uh, from the thumb and the fingers rating is consider complete uh, consider as is uh, completed uh, or rating results in the weak fiber hence it should be uh uh pro- uh rating process should be carried out within a uh, 8 days then extraction third step that is a uh, extraction of fiber uh, from the rated stalks gently keeping this uh, stalk in the water uh, beating stalks of fiber with the wooden stick should be avoided as the uh, it spoils the fiber quality the extraction should be done from each stem separately the burk and jar, uh, j- jack method is very suitable for extraction of the fiber uh Uh, for extraction of the jute fiber then it gives the cleaner uh, jute fiber then extraction fiber uh, uh, extracted fiber should be dried in the mild sun or on a bamboo frame or clear surface of any substratum or for for 2 to 3 uh, days and then yield uh, especially in the jute the national average yield the uh, especially in case of fiber fiber yield that is 13 quintals per hectare and the improved varieties that is 20 to 25 quintals per hectare then white jute uh, it gives a 4 to 5 quintals per hectare and tosso jute that is 2.5 to 3 quintals per hectare this is the uh, detail uh, uh, topic uh, with uh, regarding the crop production technology of jute thank you